In today's lecture we will talk about galaxies that are very special. They are called active galaxies. It will become fairly clear why they are called that in a few minutes. Over the last few lectures we have explained the types of galaxies. Our galaxy is a spiral arm galaxy. It may even have a bar as in barred galaxies. Other galaxies are elliptical or even almost spherical. We found out that galaxies that are spiral have more blue stars, basically relatively young stars, especially in spiral arms. The center still have fairly old stars, whereas elliptical uh, galaxies have very little dust left and very few blue stars left. This specification that you see below was started by Edwin Hubble and includes most of the galaxies that we see. Some galaxies, however, do not fall into that scheme. About 25% of galaxies are very active. The following galaxies that you see right, uh, seeing right here are called starburst galaxies. And as you can see on the left, they may be a result of collisions of galaxies that resulted in very high activity of supernovas. The most obvious thing about those active galaxies that we found out right after we noticed them, and these are not just the galaxies with supernova, but all highly um, luminous galaxies, have a very, very flat spectrum, so to say. Flat in the sense that there is a lot of X-rays, a lot of visible, a lot of infrared, lots of radio, whereas in the normal galaxy would have the peak of the uh, light somewhere in the visible part of the spectrum, same as our Sun or other stars. Therefore, active galaxies must have some other source of energy other than regular stars. Ciphered galaxies are regular galaxies on the outside, but the inside is thousands of times more luminous than the core of regular galaxies, than the bulge and core of large, uh, regular galaxies. Again, we'll find out soon why that is. Another indication that they are compact is the fact that their luminosity is changing dramatically. Now, if a galaxy is 100,000 light years across, but the total luminosity changes by almost factor 10 over a few years, or even less than a few years, that means that the source is less than a few light years across. That tells us that these huge changes in luminosity come from a very, very small region, and in the case of Cipher galaxies, we can actually see that small region. And we can't quite see how small it is, but we can infer that from the change in brightness. Another type of active galaxy is a radio galaxy. The picture on the left is the uh, Hubble Space Telescope picture. The picture on the right has superimposed in on it other parts of the spectrum, including X-rays. And as a result, we see not only that the galaxy looks kind of um, round on the top and flat towards us, basically we look, look at it this gone, but rather we see those lobes that emerge from somewhere near the center of that galaxy. In the X-ray part of the spectrum, we see something emerge exactly in the middle of the galaxy, and that is a hint as to what creates those huge radio lobes. There are quite a few fascinating radio galaxies. They go by weird names like blazars and uh, the likes. The main interesting thing, though, is that when you look at the galaxy from different perspectives, lots of weird things happen. For example, you may look at movement, and the movement may look as if it's faster than the speed of light. For example, if you're looking from the observer that's at the bottom's perspective or the observer at the top perspective, that wouldn't happen, but somewhere in between. If a um, knot is moving towards you at a speed closer to the speed of light, then that one that is closer to you seems to move laterally very fast rather than that one that is very far from you. Therefore, superluminous speeds were observed, but then realized 
that it was due to this jet motion. The furthest active galaxies are called quasars. That's a quasi-stellar object. They're so far away that they look like a point source, same as a star, but the spectrum is telling us something different. First of all, it is rather flat. Another is it's very highly redshifted, which hints at, due to Hubble law that we will learn about uh, in the next few times, it tells us that these quasars are active galaxies that are incredibly far, billions of light years away. Our best bet model for all of those active galaxies is that they have a black hole in their center. These active galaxies black holes are anywhere from million times the mass of the Sun to a billion times the mass of the Sun. The reason that they have this accretion disk as seen in this picture is because of the following. Let's assume, for example, the two clumps of matter are orbiting the black hole in opposite directions. If they make some contact as they move towards one another, they lose their lateral motion and as a result, they fall inwards. But if they had a little bit of an offset, then some matter would fly outwards. Some of that lateral motion, which is called angular momentum, may be transferred to jets. Usually, that matter is flying out in all directions, but if there is a magnetic field to guide it, it would move along jets. Those magnetic fields may either be tied to the accretion disk or to the black hole itself, which is called the Blanford Z uh, Zeldovich effect. Uh, sorry, Blanford Zenayad effect. We can actually see those jets. Those two pictures actually show the jets coming out from galaxies. And in the next picture, we will see the spectral lines that tell us that some things are coming towards us, some things are going away, either in the jets themselves or in the disk surrounding the black hole. Last but not least, our model going outwards from the black hole region is that near the black hole we may have those accretion disks and jets. Further out, you may have something called the dusty torus. Looking at the black hole surrounding through the torus will give you a more infrared type of galaxy looking more or less from the uh, above region you'll see the regular active galaxies like quasars and sieverts, and looking from the jets, you'll see blazers or something similar.